this what up b squad it is your boy jb and we are here today with a brand new review for the real housewives of atlanta seasons 15 the reunion part one you guys so i watched the reunion on bravo last night and then i woke up today and i saw that it was on peacock and i saw that it was the um uncensored version and i think it was just i think it was a little bit longer than what the, what it was on bravo so uh, it was 54 minutes without the commercial, so probably had like a little, a few extra minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes more, but hey, before we go ahead and get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning your post notifications on, and sharing the video, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 15 Reunion Part 1, shall we? All right, you guys. So this reunion, much like the season, is just nothing. What I will say is I tweeted last night, right? And... I tweeted how with this reunion, it wasn't cohesive at all because one minute we talking about this, the next minute we move over here, then we move back over here, then we move over to another store or subject. It's like, wow, I mean, what the hell was going on? Like, I was so freaking confused. Um, Yeah, like I said, this reunion, it just wasn't, it, it gave nothing. Man, I'm looking at, I'm thinking about Real Housewives of Atlanta. The Real Housewives of Atlanta reunions used to be something that you look, it was like a spectator sport, right? You would look forward to it. Like, I'll tell you guys some of my favorite Real Housewives of Atlanta reunions. Season 12 reunion, that was virtual. That reunion was epic. Season 12 reunion, season 10 reunion, um... Season 12, season 10, season number six. I believe that was six. Season number, yeah, season six. That reunion was good. Season number nine, although we got the whole shit, shit with Phaedra. And, you know, that, that was a four-part reunion, right? That was the first of a four-part reunion. Then um, I would say season season eight. Season eight, that's the season of Kim Fields. That reunion wasn't boring or nothing like that, but it just wasn't the best reunion for me. Season seven reunion was a good reunion. Um, yeah, I think all of them have been good, but my favorite ones have been those that I named. Season six, seven, nine, ten, twelve. I can't even, season 13 wasn't a bad reunion, but it just, we talked about the same stuff, and it's, you know, that bolo stuff, but hey, this reunion right here, and last season's reunion, they're not going to be memorable ever, just not going to be something that we would remember, right, so, um, the ladies, right, the dresses were meh, I guess you could say, I didn't see anything that just wowed me, so, how they are sitting is, you guys know Andy is center, right? So to Andy's right is Drew, Candy, and Kenya, and it might be his, it might be his left, <clears throat> just depending on how to the, depending on the camera, it could be his left, but that's the right from my vantage point, right? On the left side, it is Marlo, no, 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 Sheree, Marlo, Sonya. And then when the friends of them joined, Lean Mouth was over here and Monietta was over here. So we start up the reunion and we talk about Sheree's new face. <clears throat> so Sheree says that she did get a nose job done, right? But Sheree lied saying that, you know, well, she went to the doctor and she was having some breathing issues. I was like, so you had some breathing issues and your doctor said, let's cut some, cut something off of you. Let's cut your nose up. Let's just go ahead and just shrink your nose instead of opening your nose and your nostrils up. You got to think about things before you say them, Sheree. Marlo. 
Marlo has lost weight because she wants to get into um, the sample size clothes. And she's on the sh on the on the shot. I was like, oh my god, y'all that's gonna need y'all that's get on this Ozempic diet on this Ozempic train, right? Y'all do know that there's a shortage for those people who actually need that. Like, I just want to point that out. Y'all do know that there's a shortage for the diabetics who actually need that medication for themselves, right? So yeah, you guys, the Ozempic stuff. Like I said, you guys know there's a shortage of it. So just think about that. Think about that if you're trying to go that route. Think about that. But that's really all I got to say. Sonia, she, we find out she's four and a half months pregnant. And she is due on Christmas Day. So congratulations to Sonia. Girl, you do pretty soon. Like, we're in September. So you only got a few months left of pregnancy. You only got a few months left of pregnancy. So we start up and we talk about Bob and um, that girl Candace, his daughter, right? So, Sheree says that, you know, from what she knows, Bob and this girl have not taken a DNA test. And, you know, she says that Cairo and Callie have met her. So, Andy asked the question of, why didn't they tell you? She said, I'm pretty sure they probably know I don't give a shit. So, you know, they didn't tell me. She says, you know, it was before me and Bob and we're divorced. Okay, I get that part, right? But it was still... I mean, so fucked up for him to do that, right? To bring that girl around you, your house, your kids, and you don't know who she is like that. You're thinking that this is his girlfriend. So, you know, Andy also asked the question of, was this the first time that Bob had met Martel? She said, yes, it was their first time meeting. And she said, because, you know, Bob don't really come to my house. And when he does come to my house, he doesn't necessarily want to leave. So she said that, you know, everybody had left and it was just them and some other people there, right? And so Bob was upstairs and I guess they were down in her basement or something. And she said Bob came down there and said, you know, asked people, asked them that they want something to eat in her house. I would have told Bob in that moment to get the hell out of my damn house. Like, get out of my house. So then Andy, see, like I said, in the beginning, this, this reunion... It was just like copy and pay, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. Because nothing really flowed in this reunion. Because at one point after that, Andy was asking Candy about her speak on it and the fact that she and Drew were talking about that photo of Sheree when I think she was at, what, was she, what radio station was she at? I forgot which radio station was she was at. Where people were saying it looked like, um, Sheree looked like Drew. And so Candy said, well, let me be clear. It was one particular picture that she was talking about. So they showed it, and Sheree was like, well, you know, if I was Drew, I would be mad. And they were like, wait a minute. Why would Drew be mad? She said, because that wasn't my best picture. Say what you will about Sheree, right? That picture wasn't flattering, but you did look like Drew. But then are you saying that you ugly was the question that I had. Like, what are you saying about yourself, ma'am? Like, really, what are you saying about yourself? But yeah, you guys, let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys, so next up, we still with Sheree. So Sheree lets us know that, you know, at this point, she has pulled back from Martel, but they're still friends. I was like, you pulled back from the man, but you're still friends with the man. Let me ask the, the, the biggest question in the room. Why? She says that she got um, drug. She got um, drug into some of his, his mess, right? I was like, girl, you got drug into all his mess. His his um his dolphin mouth baby mama, she done talked about you. Like, did you again? I'm hoping Sheree watched that sh Love and Marriage Huntsville and saw that Martell won. You know, worth you know a hill of beans, right? Because he didn't claim you. You just his girl. You just his home girl. His friend girl. Everything but his girlfriend, right? But on this show, they referred to him as your boyfriend. So, there was a disconnect with somewhere in that situation. So, you know, Kenya asked about the revenge P, you know, P, R, N, right? And it's almost as if we glaze over that. Because I was like, so she ain't going to mention nothing about that? Like, nothing. But I was like, okay. Typical charade to just, you know, gloss past things and breeze over things. 
I was like, it is what it is, right? So then Andy asked the question of Kenya, like, why did Kenya tell Sheree about Martell and being in her DMs, right? And Kenya was saying something like, she didn't say anything to Sheree until it became official. And Sheree was like, well, if he, well you should have told me before that. Maybe I wouldn't, have stopped, I wouldn't have talked to him. Girl, you needed a storyline. So you were going to talk to them man regardless. It's like, stop lying to yourself and stop trying to lie to us. Because I don't know who you trying to fool, but you ain't fooling me, boo. You're not fooling me. All right, you guys. So um, next up, we talk about Kenya, right? So Kenya reveals that with she and Mark, Mark has held her in contempt, right? So she says that Mark is trying to say that, you know, she's not allowing him to see Brooklyn. And he's also bringing up the stuff that happened with Marlo when they were um, on the first trip when um, Alabama. Was it Alabama or was it, where were they at? Or was it Tennessee? I forgot where the hell they were. But we remember the first trip when Marlo was kicking on the door, right? So Kenya, 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 Kenya. You pulling out that paper to issue a subpoena to Marlo, it fell flat. And the reason why it fell flat is because you didn't fill it out. <laughs> like, why did you bring that out there and not double check it? I was like, no. Now, I did see on Twitter that, you know, she did put the actual document up where Marlo has been subpoenaed to come to court. Girl, so... Marlo trying to sit there on the stage and she ain't going. Well, girl, you ain't got no choice at this point unless you want to be held in contempt of court, right? So Kenya then says that, you know, Mar um, she's, um, she subpoenaed Mark's phone records and she saw that Marlo had called him and texted him two years ago, right? Saying that he was trying to get, she was trying to get dirt on him, on her. And I remember somebody talking about that. I can't remember who I saw talking about that a few years ago. When it happened. <laughs> Actually, I think it was last season, but it never made the air. Or they, I don't know if they ever talked about it, right? So, can you also say something about an ex-housewife was saying that Marlo had went to um, Mark's restaurant? I don't know who that ex-housewife is. I have no idea who that ex-housewife was. But she also did mention the fact about Marlo speaking to him <coughs> at his event. I mean, what was, I, now that part I didn't get what was so bad about that. But let's pause here, you guys, and move forward. All right, guys, so the next thing we move over to is Andy. So Andy was asking Sheree about her birthday dinner and the fact of Martell asking for the cash apps, right? So Sheree says that Martell was an invited guest, right? And so if I invite my girlfriends out, I'm, Andy said, you're going to pay for it? She's like, huh? No. I said, Andy, now why did you ask Sheree? Was she going to pay for her girlfriend's dinner? Absolutely not. So then Sheree is talking about um, Andy shaded her saying, well, Sheree, you do have a funny relationship with, you know, paying paying bills. And she was like, Andy and Candy and Drew, since y'all all want to say I don't pay my bills, at least I don't have a lawsuit or somebody saying that I stole from them, Johnny. I was like, oh, <laughs> now she went for Johnny. I mean, I think we all know at this point that OLG was not a concept that Johnny came up with. It literally is about her mom and her aunts. They are on the, they are all over that restaurant. So OLG was the old lady gang coined by Cynthia Bailey. Cynthia is the one that gave them the name, the old lady gang. So I think she, if I'm not mistaken, Cynthia named him the old lady gang after that whole situation with Karma. <laughs> I will fuck her up. Baby, when Mama Joyce says she will fuck Carmen up. So, um, Sheree says, that, like I said, Sheree says she ain't been sued by nobody. And then she mentioned the stuff with Johnny. I was like, but girl, in the season finale, you clearly said... And I didn't even mention this last week when I did my video, but you clearly said in the season finale to your daughter, Tierra, that you tell the bill collectors they'll get it when you get it. So, ma'am, you're saying that you don't pay your bills on time. So, um, Candy mentioned the fact that you had that fashion show last season, but most of those fashions that you had on that runway are not on your website. 
So Sheree is saying, well, well, Rowan paid him. Well, Rowan, Rowan may have paid that man, but um, it wasn't from you. It didn't come from you. Because I saw that that man had put out some, you know, put out a, a on, I think it was on Instagram, where he was saying that Rowan did pay him because Sheree didn't have the money. I was like, ooh, he is clocking you. Um... So then Sheree told Candy to go clean her nasty ass floors. And Candy said, say what? She said, go clean your nasty ass floors, the more greasy floors. I was like, man, it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. What do you, I mean, never mind. I, I don't know. So Candy says, worry about your dry ass face. And whatever you put in your face. I think Sheree was trying to say at one point she took her her, her, her first, her, um, Feel her, whatever she has in her face out. I'm glad you did. Uh, so they were going back and forth, and I was so confused as to what was going on with them. So Sheree told Candy, talking about your, you could never, your body, you could never. But I was like, Sheree, you've had a nose job done, boo. You got your breast, you got breast implants, boo. And I know for a fact you got a tummy tuck, cause I, I've, never mind. You got a tummy tuck. And Candy called her a nothing ass bitch. I was like, well, damn. She called her a nothing ass bitch and she called Drew a lying ass hoe. I was like, oh my God. So, Stray says that this is her first nose job. I said, girl, a lie don't care who the fuck tell it. This is not your first nose job. Girl, stop lying. So, then Sheree pulled out this pamphlet. This pamphlet. Girl, this when she pulled out that she knew... I was like, girl, what is this? And mind you, it was all about candy. It was about tags and the fact that candy sells, you know, she resells clothes from other designers at a cheaper rate. We've always known that, right? She talked about all the negative reviews from OLG and I guess Blaze. I was like, at least she got a business. At least she got a business. And Andy asked Shrey, has she turned a profit? She said, no. I said, and I think we all knew that part that she ain't turned no profit, but Girl, what are you talking about? Like, make it make sense. All right, you guys. So, we're back. Um, next up, we talk about Drew and the movie of the past, right? So, Andy asked Drew, like, how was it working with Todd and Candy? So, she says that it was really top tier, right? She said, now, the schedule was a little grueling, you know, 10 days, which that is very grueling for a schedule to film a movie. So, you know, Andy asked Candy, how did you feel about the comment? That Drew said that going forward, it's either going to be lifetime or um, above, right? Candy's a good look with that. But, I mean, let's not sit here and pretend like Drew is a terrible actress or anything. Drew's a great actress. Let's let's put some respect on Drew and her acting. So, and I know Candy, what I'm trying to, I know she didn't mean it in that sense, but yeah, let's put a little respect on that. So then, you know, Sheree and Marlo, they were over there, you know, whispering to each other, right? They were whispering. So Drew said that when it came down to this movie that, you know, initially her agent turned it down because you guys know Drew, Drew is part of the, I think Drew, Drew and Candy are both part of the Screen Actors Guild Union, right? So, because Candy couldn't promote the movie last week because of that. So uh, Drew was saying that, you know, it was below her rate of what she typically accepts, right? So Candy said, that's correct. She did come down. So Marlo says, well, I heard that she got paid. Actually, I think Sheree said it, and then Marlo repeated it. She said she got paid $10,000. Kenny said, we paid her more than $10,000. So then we talk about uh, the shade between Drew and Kenya, right? You guys remember Drew was like, when is the last time that Kenya has acted? And then Kenya was like, the thing about Drew's movie video shoot was that it was a low budget Beyonce's blow, right? And... I'm glad that they both were able to, well, I think Kenny apologized to Drew. And I saw last night on Twitter that Drew apologized to Kenya for that. So I guess they good. And I did see that Kenya, you know, Drew apologized to Candy and said that they need to have a conversation with each other, right? So I guess all is good there too. So then that was the next thing we talked about was this, this Drew LaToya situation, right? Now, I did not realize that Drew said at the season 13 reunion that she had kissed a girl before. Drew, girl, girl, girl. I really be trying to defend you sometimes, but damn, girl, 
you make it hard because you do lie quite a bit. Like a nigga really be trying to defend Drew, but I'm like, girl, I can't defend that. Because if you get caught up in the lies, then what can I say? <laughs> like, I mean, damn, Drew, you get caught up in your lies, boo. And I be wanting to have you back and defend you and whatnot. But, um, yeah, girl, if you kiss the toy, you, you kiss the toy, right? It is what it is. Um, I'm pretty sure Ralph has done far worse than that. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I how I feel, right? So Drew called um, Candy a liar. And, you know, she says that it was Candy Coded Lies and that Candy's team asked her to go along with it. And, you know, Drew was like, people don't want to go against Candy because they're afraid of, you know, I guess like the ramifications. I was like, well, you know, y'all can feel how y'all want to feel, but I don't really necessarily believe that Drew is lying. Like, y'all can feel how y'all want to feel about this situation. And don't come in my comments and be like, that, 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 that. Don't come in my comments with that, you guys. Please don't. Please do not. Please do not. Please do not. So, but Candy sticks with the fact that she saw them kissing each other. If Candy says she saw them kissing each other and Drew says she didn't kiss Latoya, I don't care. That's where I stand with that situation. I do not give a damn. Just period point blank, you guys. I really don't care. If Drew kissed Latoya, if she kissed the girl and she liked it, it is what it is. If she didn't, I don't, again, I don't care. 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 Now, what I will say, though, is I noticed something in this scene. So on the show, they didn't really show this. But then on the Peacock episode, they showed the fact that with um, Candy and Drew, they talked about. It. So you guys know, I don't watch Speak on it and I don't watch um, the after show. So I didn't know that on the after show that Candy had questioned um, Allison's mental health. I still think that's, I just don't think that's a, a cool thing to do to question her mental health. I think it's low and I think it's disgusting to be quite honest with you guys. You guys can feel how you want to feel. Those are my personal opinions and I'm not changing how I feel. Period, point blank, right? And the reason why Candy said she felt that way because Drew lies. Okay, even if Drew lies, why would you, like, why would you question if her sister has a mental health issue, mental health break, issues, anything, illness, whatever, and then I did so and also didn't watch the speak on it from last week. Well, I don't watch speak on it, period. But I did see the clip that was circulating around on the blogs, you know, by um, that, that was made by Candy and Courtney, where she said that she doesn't look like somebody who has a mental health issue. And then I don't know what Courtney said, but I know it was I know it was disgusting. Oh, she said she doesn't want to argue with somebody with a mental with mental health issues. Girl, you and your lean and crooked ass mouth need to shut the fuck up. I can't stand that lady. And then the other thing that threw me with Candy was the fact that she sat there and told Drew she believes that Drew gaslight Ralph. I was like, huh? Now, ma'am, we're not going to do no revisionist, revisionist history. We have definitely saw that man gaslight the fuck out of Drew. Like, no. Marlo, next question for you. Why the fuck are you texting Ralph? Telling him things are going to work, to you know, talking about things are going to work itself out. I guess Drew and Ralph are talking about their marriage. I don't know and I don't care, but why is Marlo texting him? Very odd for me. So, let's pause here and I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode, you guys. So, Crooked Lean Mouth Courtney and Monietta joined the kiss show, right? Andy asked Crooked Lean Mouth how she and Ralph are related. Lean Mouth and Ralph are not related. That's all I'm going to say. So, Drew, 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 girl, you brought a prop to the reunion. The, re the prop fell flat, boo. You threw that plum over there towards, uh, towards Lean Mouth, right? What you should have done was you should have just had that plum, right? Had that plum and threw that plum right for that bitch face. Hit that bitch right smack dead in her fucking face. That's all I got to say. I don't condone violence, but she mentioned her son and... For somebody to say, well, she didn't really talk about her son. She talked about the adoption. She's bringing up her child. Are y'all? Never mind. She is bringing up that woman's child. I don't give a fuck if y'all like Drew or not. Y'all got to be able to say right is right and wrong is wrong. She was mentioning, she's not talking about Drew's parenting. She ain't talking about Drew. She is talking about the, she is not talking about parenting that young man. 
she is talking about the fact that she wanted someone to adopt her child so that she can throw so she can literally leave her child with Ralph so that she could be in her, a gay relationship that is speaking on her and her son like oh Jesus get that raggedy hoe off my screen like I told you guys I really do feel like lean mouth is coming back so we found out Marlo is still dating Scott Lee they've had sex with each other I don't give a damn Marlo is still working on getting her record expunged um, Courtney and Phaedra are helping her girl good luck with that one Phaedra's helping you Girl, I would, I would, I would say anybody. Phaedra. Phaedra. Girl, you better just letting this shit stay on your record, to be quite honest with you. Now, the next thing that I want to say that didn't make any sense was Kenya. Kenya, 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 Kenya. That stuff with you, that's, you talking about Roy and that super teaser and all that kind of stuff, and him not, the reason why he didn't come around? Yeah, it, it 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 came off like a lie. Congratulations on your salon, though, right? I want to talk about I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now back to Lean Mouth, ma'am. How are you and Ralph fast and furious cousins, and y'all didn't even know that y'all were related? <laughs> Me thinks y'all are having sex together, but that's my thoughts. So I'm gonna say allegedly because I don't know that to be true. These are my opinions, my thoughts and opinions. I'm not saying that this is true, but that's what I think. So, um, oh, okay. So next up, we were talking about the fact that, you know, remember earlier in the season, Sheree mentioned the lawsuit about Drew. Drew's whole thing was with Sheree. She just wished that Sheree had called her. And so Sheree said, well, are you going to call me if something comes up? She said, yeah. Do I believe either one of them? Not a chance in hell. So then, you know, someone asked Sheree, it's like, when it comes to you, we feel like you only address the you don't address the women in person. You wait until you get into your interviews to you know talk about them. Mm, now uh, to defend Sheree, they all kind of do that, right? They all are, are guilty of doing that, but Sheree is more so worse with it. Because Sheree very rarely says anything in, in, their, in their face. The only person that she will come at is Drew. She don't say, the, say, the things that she said about Kenya, she don't say it. Sometimes she don't say it to Kenya's face. The things she said about Kenya, she don't say it to her face all the time. And even with Drew, sometimes she, there's things that she'll say in her interviews that she doesn't say to Drew's face, right? So, but they're all guilty of it, right? Monietta agreed. I was like, Monietta, my, my, my girl. Don't do that. Monietta, because I don't think you're going to uh, I like Monietta, but Monietta didn't bring nothing this season. But I know she's a friend of, so how much can a friend of really bring, right? But hey, it is what it is, right? We then talked about the video that Monietta shot of the ladies when they were in Portugal, right? So, Lean Mouth, Monietta said that Lean Mouth said that she would never go against Sheree. And Lean Mouth says that she was just imitating Drew in that video. So if you were imitating Drew in the video, why can't you just say that to Drew when it was Drew and Allison in your face and you sat there and said that, yes, you were talking about Drew, but then you said the reason why you told Drew that is because you, she was getting on your nerves. Girl, you're a liar too. You call Drew a liar, but so are you. So then they bring up the thing of Lean Mouth saying that Candy brings out the ghetto. Now she did not, uh, to defend Lean Mouth, she never said that Candy is ghetto, but Candy said that that was, you know, she, um, she found, you know, she she didn't like that, right? And I'm cool with that. You can feel how you want to feel. But Candy, you addressed it on Speak on it. Now, I know you could probably feel the way about Sonya and her laughing. That's fine, right? I don't have an issue with that. Then, like I said, this, this shit was all over the place. Yeah, do, you, do you guys realize I'm just talking about different things? <laughs> Nothing's cohesive, right? You guys notice that I'm... It, it, it sound it might sound that way like I'm just bouncing around. This is not me bouncing around. This is what they did. They bounced around back and forth because then after we talked about the situation with Candy and Lean Mouth, then we jump over to the situation with Marlo slamming the door at Monietta's face and Sheree saying that you know well she didn't Monietta was in front of her so she didn't see it but Monietta saw it, but y'all literally told her that she didn't see what she saw. 
child what the hell then after that we jumped over to lean mouth hun drew are getting into it right drew keeps talking about she's a non-verifiable cousin i'm like girl I, I think we all know that by now i mean i think we all kind of put 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 two and two together earlier in the season right so baby i'm sorry drew you should have just got up and popped the fuck out of lean mouth you saw what i mean i mean it's happened more we've had physical fights on these shows this one i would have justified it because bitch talked about your child um so andy mind you like i said we're going we talk we're, we're, we're going in circle we're not we're going from scene different scenes in this season and i was like what so we talked about the fact that lean mouth said that kenya's karma was falling on her ass and she said that you know Kenya was cussing production out, so she knew that Kenya was fine. I was like, oh, I was with Kenya, so you're a doctor now? Well, I'm smart enough to be one, girl. No, the fuck you not. No, you're not. No, you're not. So speaking of Kenya's um, salon, right? Now, I did see that um, Millie Chun, you know, she was in Atlanta, and she went to Kenya's salon, and she was basically saying that, um, you know, it wasn't open, right? And I even Google, I did Google it too as well after Millichon went down there. And I did find the same thing that she found. It says, you know, coming in the fall of 2023, but the fall is not here. The fall is not here. The fall won't be here until September 21st. That is the fall solstice. So we're not in the fall. And Kenya said that she, you know, she had a soft opening. And I did, and this is, I'm not. So what I'm saying here about Millie Chun is I'm not saying this in a negative way about her. I'm not saying anything nasty. I'm not saying anything negative. I'm just saying what I, you know, telling you guys what I saw from her. And, you know, Kenya had a soft opening. A soft opening is just that. It's not open to the general public. It's just open to a select few people. Like she can invite her friends. She might invite some influencers out. She may she may invite some people out, you know, to you know some pre a little press out, and that'll be all that she invites out. So she had so she had a soft opening. Her stores her, her salon is not open, and I know that Millie Chun showed that it was still under renovation. But then Kenya said in in this re, in this reunion that it's under renovation because the I guess she's adding a loft to it, and she didn't want to have to sit and wait six months. For that to be open so for that to be done so she's just waiting to have it all done at once she's having that done so that way when she opens everything is open and i was like okay that's actually very smart and again like i said i'm not i'm not saying anything negative about millie chum i did see that she came out and she apologized today i don't have any you know we all make mistakes i think we all make mistakes right Sometimes, you know, we, we, we do things and we, we say and do things we're not without having all the facts and knowledge, right? So, yeah, I don't have an issue with that. I know people are going hard at her on social media, and I don't like it, but, you know, it comes with the territory. But, you know, y'all know that's not my, my, that's not my lane or, or anything like that. I don't do stuff like that. It's not something that I would ever do. I'm, like y'all be trying to tell me to do interviews with people that's not my lane either like none of that stuff is my lane none of that stuff is my lane i just do what i do and i stay in my lane i do my reviews i upload them and i go on about my damn business i don't think about this shit no more until it's time to do another review right like that's why I don't, that's why i say i don't watch speak on it i don't watch the after show i don't and i don't give commentary on that shit because i honestly i don't care you guys and um, since we're talking about it, you guys, I didn't want to discuss it, and I'm not going. I'm not going to discuss it too deeply. Um, the situation with that interview with Courtney, I know I talked about. It, I know I talked about it earlier, and I saw Candy speak on it last night. I saw clips of it. Right, you guys can feel how you want to feel. It was a lack of accountability for me. And y'all love to say that Candy doesn't lie, but in that speak on it. My personal opinions, she did lie. And I still like Candy, right? But in my personal opinion, she lied, right? Because, you know, they were, talking, they, they were trying to say, Courtney said this, Courtney said that, but Candy, you also said something as well. You said something as well. You didn't address what you said 
about the fact that Allison doesn't look, and if she may have, I don't know. I just saw a brief, I just saw a few look, I just saw a brief few seconds of it, right? Not even a few seconds. I saw where her and Jamie were talking about it, right? And they were talking about that somebody had went in and uploaded the video. Okay, I get that y'all didn't like that, right? And that's fine. Y'all are entitled to feel how y'all want to feel. But you put it out there for the world to see in the first place. And you can't be upset that somebody screen grabbed you and posted it. Now, you can do whatever you want to do, right? That is your prerogative of how you want to you know, handle that situation. But you can't be mad because people, someone screen grabbed what you said and put it out there for everyone to see what you said. You cannot be upset about that because you and your team didn't do your due diligence when y'all were editing that video to say, you know what, what we saying right here is it might be a little bit offensive to a certain pe group of people. So let us not trigger people. Let us not upset people. Let us just do the best, the right thing and take it out. But no, y'all took it out after you got the backlash in your comment section. I thought that was fucked up, right? Because let's talk about it real quick. You tell mental health does not have a look. Look at me. Do I look like I have any mental health issues? No, I look fine, right? But I have very high anxiety. I have anxiety, really bad. I have depression. My depressions came about after my mom passed away. You guys would never know when I have a, you guys never know when I'm having issues with depression because I still come on this channel and I still give you guys content. You guys can never tell, can never tell. <clears throat> so I just didn't like that. But yeah, that's all I got you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications and share the video, you guys. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, you guys. Be blessed. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one, you guys. Definitely, watch you guys be safe because COVID is still out there and it's ramping up. But yeah, I'll see you guys later on. I'll see you guys later. Maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow before I go to. I'll probably see you guys tomorrow before I go to work or about ten. Oh no, the view is back at ten o'clock tomorrow, so I'll probably see you guys before I go to work or I'll see you guys at eleven a.m. for eleven a.m. Central Time for the Real Housewives of New York City. If I don't do it tonight. I haven't made up my mind because I haven't watched the episode yet, but I'll let you guys know. But I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.